Thank you for the warm welcome. Uh, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, very serious problems that uh, we're facing right here at home. Uh, but for a little perspective, uh, I would like to start with some uh, uh, very important events that are taking place right now, uh, far away, in an area of the world where the United States has been intensely involved for uh, a long time and surely will continue to be. Uh, right at this moment, there are massive demonstrations taking place uh, in Egypt, uh, mostly young people, many thousands of people in the streets and are facing police uh, uh, brutality, uh, protesting the uh, uh, terror and uh, venality of the uh, dictatorship uh, which the U.S. Uh, strongly supports. Uh, this is the first of the anticipated uh, spillovers from uh, what's been going on in Tunisia in the past days. A uh, very impressive democratic movement in a police, I'm quoting, in a police state with little freedom of expression or association and serious human rights problems ruled by a dictator whose family is hated by the population for the corruption and the brutality of the family regime. Well, as perhaps you know, I'm quoting the U.S. ambassador in a secret cable uh, that was released by WikiLeaks. Uh, shortly after the cable arrived in Washington, uh, the government provided substantial military aid to the Tunisian dictatorship that the ambassador had described. Uh, that was, Tunisia was one of five uh, foreign beneficiaries of that grant of aid, uh, Israel routinely, and two other Middle Eastern dictatorships, uh, along with Tunisia, Egypt, and Jordan. Uh, and the fifth was Colombia, uh, the country that has long held the prize for the uh, worst uh, human rights record in the hemisphere and has been the leading recipient of U.S. military aid uh, throughout this whole period in the hemisphere, a correlation that uh, generalizes, uh, unfortunately. Well, there's a guiding principle in this and uh, many other cases. It was articulated clearly a couple of days ago by Marwan uh, Mouasher. He's a Carnegie Endowment. Middle East specialist, former high official of the Jordanian government. Uh, he's reacting to what was happening in Tunisia. He says, the traditional argument put forward in and out of the Arab world is that there's nothing wrong, everything is under control. Uh, he's quite correct, and the argument generalizes far beyond the Arab world. It generalizes to the domestic scene in the United States as well. Right now, in fact, uh, if the population is uh, sufficiently passive and obedient, everything's fine. Doesn't matter what else is happening. The guiding principle is that the powerful should try to uh, gain their ends by any feasible means, supporting harsh dictatorships in the current Middle East case, uh, and that's fine. One can ignore the popular will as long as the population is kept under control. And the pattern's quite general and very significant for us in a number of ways. Uh, one I've mentioned, namely the guiding principle applies right here uh, to us. So obviously significant for us. Uh, and uh, it has indeed throughout American history. I'll return to that. Uh, another reason is that this guiding principle, uh, this contempt for the population as long as they're under control and uh, reliance on dictatorships is a very direct and serious uh, security threat to us. It's a root cause of the terror that Washington is theoretically uh, seeking to combat 
uh, but in reality is consistently stimulating by pursuing this guiding principle. Incidentally, that's also at the root of the huge uh, military budget of the U.S., about the same as the rest of the world combined, strangling the economy. Uh, half of the famous deficit, uh, the other half of the famous deficit, which Mr. Obama will be talking about in the uh, State of the Union message, and I'm sure won't mention, uh, the other half of the deficit is the uh, totally dysfunctional uh, privatized health care system, uh, about twice the per capita costs of any other of comparable countries, uh, some of the worst outcomes. Uh, if we had a uh, health system of the kind that uh, comparable countries have, uh, there would be no deficit and uh, probably there would indeed be a surplus. Well, uh, going back to the uh, uh, root cause of terror, you'll recall, I'm sure, after 9-11, uh, President Bush uh, declared that uh, uh, they committed the terrorist crimes because they hate our freedoms. Uh, shortly after that, a uh, major Pentagon study group, the Defense Science Board, uh, reacted to President Bush's comment uh, in a report, like others who know anything about the history and the uh, uh, current circumstances of the region, they concluded, I'm quoting them, that Muslims do not hate our freedom, quoting Bush, but rather they hate our policies. Uh, when American public diplomacy talks about bringing democracy to Islamic societies, this is seen as no more than self-serving hypocrisy. Uh, these views, incidentally, are quite conventional, uh, among specialists at least, uh, who also understand that these U.S. policies are a gift uh, to the extremists among the jihadis. Uh, general consensus on this is formulated clearly by David Gardner. He's Middle East correspondent of the world's leading business daily, the Financial Times, many years of experience in the region, books and so on. Uh, he says, so long as the jihadis can rely on the United States to stand by its Arab allies, such as the House of Saud and President Mubarak of Egypt, uh, then the bin Laden franchise franchise's monstrous bet that it can foment a class of civilizations may be evil, but is not uh, wholly mad. If we continue to connive in the survival of tyranny, uh, we abet the onward march of the jihadis, for whom Western policy is their most consistently reliable ally. That same observation was made by Michael Scheuer, uh, who for many years was in charge of uh, tracking bin Laden for the CIA. Uh, he concludes that the United States of America remains bin Laden's only indispensable ally. Uh, and that remains true. Uh, Obama is a very strong supporter of the House of Saud and the Egyptian dictator who's now under siege in Cairo and Alexandria. Uh, the uh, insights are by no means new. Uh, this is all old hat. Uh, in 1958, uh, President Eisenhower, in internal uh, discussion since declassified, uh, he uh, consulted with his staff on what he called the campaign of hatred against us uh, in the Arab world, and not among the governments who are mostly supportive, but among the people. It was pretty striking in 1958 because just shortly before, uh, Eisenhower had intervened to force uh, Israel, France, and England uh, out of the ter out of uh, the, the Sinai, which they had conquered, an act of aggression. Uh, but uh, instead of gratitude, there was a campaign of hatred. Uh, about the same time, the National Security Council, top planning body, uh, released a report 
uh, in which they explained the campaign of hatred. Uh, they said, the report says that uh, uh, there's a perception in the Arab world that the United States uh, supports harsh and brutal dictatorships and blocks democracy and development because we want to make sure we control the, their energy resources. And it went on to say that the perception is pretty accurate and furthermore that's what we should be doing uh, following the guiding principle that as long as the population's controlled by the dictators everything's fine. Uh, the uh, 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 right after 9-11, uh, the Wall Street Journal, to its credit, uh, did a poll among uh, uh, wealthy uh, Muslims, the kind of people it cares about, uh, people, you know, directors of multinational corporations, uh, uh, wealthy professionals, people uh, deeply embedded in the uh, U.S.-run system in the region. And they wanted to know what they thought about uh, uh, the 9-11 attack. Reactions were pretty much what the National Security Council described in 1958. They said that there's anger in the region about U.S. support for the dictators, uh, for U.S. Uh, blocking democracy and development. And by 2001, there were more specific uh, uh, complaints. Uh, one of them was about the murderous uh, sanctions on Iraq, which m murdered literally hundreds of thousands of people, uh, strengthened Saddam Hussein, and forced the population to rely on him for survival, probably saved him from the fate of other dictators we support. That didn't get much of a ripple here, but in the region people notice when hundreds of thousands of people are slaughtered by uh, a brutal and harsh uh, sanctioned regime, U.S., of course. Uh, that, uh, and the other thing of by then, not, not in 1958, was uh, U.S. support for Israeli uh, occupation, uh, terror, and violence. Well, that's uh, after 9-11 among wealthy Arabs. You can imagine what the reaction would have been if they'd done a broader poll. Uh, the same was true of the Iraq War. The Iraq War, you should remember, was undertaken with the expectation that it was going to increase terror. Uh, that's the expectation from intelligence agencies, including the CIA. Uh, more material has come out recently from the uh, Chilcot hearings in England. England's actually carrying out an investigation of the buildup to the war, which we're not. And uh, uh, the counterpart to the CIA uh, released information that the British government uh, was aware and the CIA was aware that the attack was likely to uh, increase terror. French intelligence, others said the same thing as did many specialists, and it happened. In fact, more than was expected. Uh, terror the year after the invasion of Iraq went up by a factor of seven using U.S. government statistics. That's quite a sharp rise, even more than was anticipated. Actually, there's a dramatic illustration of that that's taking place right now uh, of, of the doctrine that, the Muashar doctrine, that as long as the population's under control, everything that's fine. Yeah, I'm sure you've been reading about WikiLeaks, uh, the big exciting revelation, the one that got all the headlines, uh, was that the Arabs support our policy towards Iran. Well, maybe true or not, uh, but notice what they were referring to they were referring to the Arab dictators. The Arab dictators, they claim, support our policy. Uh, and that's the way the press covered it, and that's the way commentary was. A lot of self-adulation about the fact that we're supported by the Arabs. Well, as it happens, uh, just a couple of weeks before that, uh, the Brookings Institute, major institution in Washington, had released a poll taken by a leading U.S. polling agency, which has been conducting polls in the Arab world for many years.